The November 1966 issue of Electronics Illustrated has a feature article, Build This Space Age Decimal Computer. Page 39. At the quick spin of the dial, it adds, subtracts, multiplies, or divides. Well, not really. It's really just an adding machine. But I was inspired to make one of my own. I'll show you how it adds, the clues you need to make it subtract, and then talk about the internals. The original design in the magazine had problems, so I cheated a little. My top priority was to make it look like the project in the magazine article. It uses the same neon lamps recommended in the article. It has a telephone dial for input. Even the enclosure is the same one recommended in the article almost 60 years ago. It's still being manufactured. I don't know who would be buying these. No one's selling products in Atomic Age boxes anymore. Let's say we want to add 38 and 76. First, we press the clear button and all the neon lamps get set to zero. To enter a number, you select the place, ones, tens, hundreds, up to the hundred thousands place, and dial the digit. So, we'll set the knob to the tens place, dial three, set the knob to the ones place, and dial eight. As the phone dial turns, the lamps light up in sequence. Then we dial in the number we're adding, one column at a time. Doesn't matter which order we go, the numbers get carried over as needed. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And we get the answer, 114. Subtraction is trickier. Consider the following subtraction problem, which I will put up here. Three hundred forty two minus one hundred seventy three. You can't take three from two, two is less than three, so you look at the four in the tens place. Since there's no subtraction capability, we need to add the nines complement. So instead of subtracting one hundred seventy three, we're going to add nine 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 eight two six. We need to include those leading nines. But we don't have to figure out the nines complement ourselves. This ring of numbers around the dial is what we use when we're subtracting and it does the nines complement for us. So, let's enter 342. And then dial 000173 on the outer ring of numbers. It doesn't matter what order we dial them in because addition is commutative, right? And that leaves 168. Well, 169 actually, but the idea is the important thing. You added another one. Why did you have to add another one? I hear you cry. Well, when you subtract by adding the nines complement, you need to do an end around carry, don't you see? Well, you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. <laughs> the 1966 design used ring buffers. They're a neat way to make neon lamps act like switches. Neon lamps turn on at higher voltages than they turn off, and along with capacitors to store a charge, that can be exploited so that pulses cause one lamp to turn off and the next lamp in the sequence to turn on. The problem is, these cheap lamps were not manufactured to have uniform voltage thresholds. So even though you only need 60 lamps for this adding machine, the 1966 article tells you to buy 100 lamps, run them for 48 hours to stabilize their threshold voltages, then measure all of their on and off voltages, group the similar ones together, and use different resistors to compensate for variances. The author was worried that 40% of the lamps you buy could be unusable. If you do all this, and you're lucky enough to get everything working, your luck is not going to last long. Your space age computer is still going to break because the lamps on and off voltages are going to keep changing as they age. In short, if anyone built these back in 1966, I suspect they were sorely disappointed. I don't deal well with disappointment. So instead of using 1960s technology, I used 1970s technology. 
I used a decade counter integrated circuit and drove the lamps with the same chip everyone uses in Nixie clocks. So, on the plus side, this looks and operates just as it was envisioned in 1966. But it falls short of being historically accurate in that, you know, it works.